lease negotiations generally have six parts to their process, so let's dive into them. First is the financial analysis. You start by understanding where you are and where you want to go. Take your existing baseline costs and compare them with all of the proposal responses from the competitive landlords. The column next to your current lease numbers should contain the renewal proposal. Add a row at the bottom that calculates the annual net increase or decrease for each option as compared to your current lease. The one extra item worth mentioning is the construction costs. If every space will be finished to your specifications on a turnkey basis, meaning that the landlord will do all of the work with absolutely no risk or expense to the tenant, which is you, then no adjustment is really necessary here. But if the space needs $250,000 in improvements and the landlord will only provide something less, say $200,000 allowance, you'll need to amortize that $50,000 balance as an upward adjustment to the rent. Be sure to include architect and engineering expenses if you simply have a construction only quote from a contractor. Now the lease terms themselves. Now's the time to actually dig in to further understand the terms beyond just the rental rate. Ask for a copy of the proposed lease document. For your renewal, you wanna confirm this will be a simple amendment to the existing lease and not a completely new document. If the ownership on your building has changed, the landlord might insist on using their own form, which could potentially change many terms from the original lease. Analyze the lease terms using a good commercial tenant lease checklist. You can also get a quick short list of terms to improve upon by uploading an existing or proposed lease in the Leasing Better iPhone or Android app using the Make My Lease Better feature. If attorneys often get labeled deal killers, the landlord's broker is generally considered a deal maker. That's because it is in the best interest of their client, the landlord, to lease the space. And it doesn't hurt that his or her motivation that the landlord broker only gets paid uh, if indeed that does happen. Remember, they've probably already completed dozens of leases with this landlord and their attorney. So therefore, they have a very good understanding of what is negotiable and what is not. A good landlord rep can become your ally and help you identify what lease terms and items are the most important and where the landlord will have some flexibility. But remember, their fiduciary is to get the best possible terms for the landlord. Never forget that. Letters of intent, an LOI, is simply documentation of a term sheet outlining the points that are agreed upon. This may be as simple as redlining the landlord's proposal and making sure that it's a two-party document, so meaning it's signed by both you and them, not just one of you. It probably will and should have language that says it is not binding until a final lease is signed by both parties. The lease document and negotiation and redlining is where you need to dissect the landlord's long lease. If you're renewing and using a simple amendment with all other terms to remain the same and you're satisfied with your original lease document, there may not be much to negotiate. If it's a new document, you should read the entire lease, highlight the terms that you don't like or may not fully understand and then forward on to your attorney with questions. We absolutely, positively do not recommend making lease comments or modifying language without the advice of a really smart real estate attorney. A typical institutional lease doc is 40 or 50 pages long and not a word is there by mistake. It's all there to protect the landlord and shift as much risk as possible to the tenant. Much of it is negotiable, but that's also dependent on your financial strength, the value of the potential lease. Uh, you know, when in doubt, object. Some items the landlord expects to give up on easily. Some others they might not remove if your firm was Berkshire Hathaway. 
The last part of a lease negotiation is signing the final lease document. And this should simply be a formality, but as with any legal document valued in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, you should check it very closely. You'd be surprised how many times we find errors in amounts or bits of agreed upon language that never quite make it into the final signature docs. All good? Well, then sign it and attach your check for the first month's rent and deposit. Even if you received free rent, the lease probably requires you to submit a full month rent and any security deposit upon signing. Send it off to the landlord. As soon as you get a fully executed copy back, the lease is valid. Congratulations.